Hello, it's your boy Dane and welcome back to the Cupcake Gemma channel where I welcome you with open arms as we fly into our third week of our Bake the Books challenge where we bake one thing from each chapter of our gorgeous brand new book, Crumbs and Doilies. And this actually started as a little mini challenge on Instagram amongst the community. We thought it was really cool, so we wanted to bring it here on YouTube. And if you like this mini series that we're doing, make sure that you scroll down and give it a thumbs up. And also make sure that you're subscribed so that you can join in the baking fun every single week. We want you to bake along with us and share your creations with us. Upload any pictures or videos that you want so we can see what you are up to. We will tell you what the next bake is at the end of every video each week so that you can get yourself prepared. This week's is tray bakes and I'm so excited to be making one of my own creations from the book, my banana blondies. These slap so hard so I'm really excited for you to make them and they are a delicious fudgy caramelized banana blondie packed full of chopped pecans, milk chocolate, dark chocolate, they're insane. For me, this was a no-brainer to bake from the tray bake section. First things first, I'm gonna prepare the tin. Now, every tray bake in the recipe book uses one of these eight inch square tins. So if you don't have one, I recommend you get yourself one. And I'm just gonna prepare it by spraying some tin release spray in here, or you could use butter. And I'm just gonna lightly grease the tin and then put a sheet of grease proof in the middle and stick it up the sides and fold it over. Give another little spray and pop another sheet of grease proof paper in going the opposite way. Secure the flaps of paper with some metal clips. Now that our tin is prepared, first thing we're gonna need is some bananas. I've got some really ripe ones here that I have been defrosting because they've, I've had a stash in the freezer and you want them really, really ripe. This is as ripe as these are gonna go. And what we're gonna do is just pop them out of their skins, chop them up and measure out 210 grams. So I really wanted to intensify the banana flavor. So I'm gonna make a little bit of like a caramel out of it, almost like caramelized bananas. So I've got 40 grams of unsalted butter going into a saucepan and 40 grams of soft light brown sugar going in as well. Just let that melt down and then add your banana. Cook it on a high heat, stirring often so that it doesn't burn, but you want it to catch a little bit and get those flecks of caramelization. This should take around eight to 10 minutes. Once the color is deep and golden, take it off the heat to cool down, and the next step is to brown the butter. I've got 120 grams of butter here in a saucepan on a medium heat. Just keep stirring until the color changes to deep amber and you can see flecks forming on the bottom of the pan. It adds a rich, nutty flavor to any bake. Pour it into a large heat-proof bowl and leave to cool for five minutes. To our cooled brown butter, I'm just gonna add 200 grams of soft light brown sugar and just give it a whisk to combine. This will literally take seconds. Next to add is eggs. Always large, I've got three. And one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Whisk these together until combined and then switch to a spatula and sift in 215 grams of plain flour, a quarter teaspoon of baking powder, and one teaspoon of salt. Fold this through until it's almost smooth and then add in the banana mixture. Mix it until it's almost fully combined. That's all mixed through. And then we're gonna add some chopped pecans. So I've just got 160 grams here that I chopped up and some chocolate, of course. Now I've gone for a mixture of milk chocolate and dark chocolate as well. I've got 150 grams of milk and 50 grams of dark. I chopped this from a bar because for me, I like the massive chunks of chocolate in there that you get opposed to like using chips. That's how I intend you to enjoy it, but honestly, whatever you can get your hands on, do that. This is just my preference. So I'm only gonna add in three quarters of the chocolate mixture and three quarters of the pecans as well because we're gonna save some for the topping. Give them a quick fold through the mixture, making sure they're dispersed really well and pour it into the prepared tin. Level it out with a palette knife and sprinkle on the remaining chocolate and nuts. We are gonna bake this in a preheated oven at 160 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes. been baking for 30 minutes and how can I tell that it's done without sticking a skewer in it? Well, if you just give it a little jiggle, it should be set around the edge, about one and a half centimeters, two centimeters deep, and it will jiggle in the middle. That's how you know it's done. It'll be nice and fudgy. You wanna leave it here to cool down and set it in the fridge, wrapped up for about four hours, preferably overnight though. 
it is so important to chill your blondies and brownies in the fridge. What we've done is slightly underbaked it, and that is exactly what we want, but basically, the fat in here, like the eggs and the butter, will still be kind of squishy at room temperature, but that's why you want to chill it in the fridge, because it will set them down. And what we want is to reach peak fudginess, and we do that by setting them in the fridge. Because when you do that, it's a breeze to cut, and you get those super sharp, really clean edges. And some people think that this is like Insta versus reality, when you get these really super sharp edges. Honey Bucha, you can get this too. Just fridge them, and then eat them. Mmm, this blondie beats all blondies. And you know what? I created this when in lockdown, the nation's favorite break was banana bread. And of course, I did my own version of banana bread, but I got bored really quickly. Everyone kept on baking it. So I really wanted to like keep that banana bread narrative, but turn it into something really fresh and modern. And this is it, the banana bread blondie. Right, go ahead and get your, get your, get your, get your, get your bake on. Bake these banana blondies and make sure if you make them, I wanna see what you're getting up to on Instagram. So use the hashtag Cupcake Gemma and Crumbs and Doilies book. And also, if you just scroll down a little bit after this video in the description box, we have a link to where you can buy the Crumbs and Doilies book from our website. And I'm also obliged to say that it's also available from all good bookstores, but you know, supporting small businesses and all that. Sally Della will be back next week baking one of Nikki's stunning recipes for ginger creams. Now, if you thought these blondies would make you weak at the knees, you wait till you try these ginger creams. Okay, see you next time. Kill it up.